Great. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll do introductions one by one because there's a few of us as part of this uh, case panel this morning. Um, we're here to discuss Haiku and why different organizations and institutions have chosen Haiku as uh, the technology that they wanted to uh, use for their application. Um, so beginning, Sarah, if you could introduce yourself, maybe just talk about the just say a couple sentences about the project that the British Library is working on. And of course, just a reminder that for those that are comfortable, um, feel free to give a physical description to help with the visually impaired. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Gould. Um, the only description of myself that I will give is that I'm from the UK, as you can hopefully tell from my accent. Um, and one of not that many uh, European participants in Sambira Connect this year. So come on Europe, come on UK, let's get active in the Sambira Connect community. Um, my job title is Repository Services Lead. I'm one of two people who make up a relatively new Sambira um, Repository Services team at the British Library. And just as recently as November last year, we launched our effectively first ever institutional repository, research repository for ourselves and for five pilot partner organizations, all of whom, including ourselves, are not higher education, but rather museums, libraries, cultural heritage organizations. Um, and that's me in a nutshell, I'll pass on. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Gretchen Keegan. Hi, I'm Gretchen. Um, I am the Digital Projects Manager at the PALSI Consortium. Uh, so we're working jointly with PALMI, who will um, uh, be introduced in a second, on the Haiku for uh, Consortia project. Um, so PALSI is a, is a consortium in the Mid-Atlantic. We have uh, 71 members from a, a large variety of types of academic libraries, um, from the smallest small to the largest large. Um, and budgets all along the spectrum. I work on a number of different um, technology projects there um, all across the gamut of library services. So Haiku is, is just one part of our project. Thank you, Gretchen. Brian Hull. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Brian Hull. I'm the CEO of Ubiquity. Um, it's my first time describing myself. Uh, the best I can come up with is that I'm a, a white middle-aged guy. So I'm happy for coaching on how to do that better. Um, yeah, so I'm the CEO of Ubiquity. Um, we were involved in Haiku in, in several ways. One is as a service provider. Um, we, you know, we provide it to higher education institutions, uh, cultural heritage institutions, etc. cetera. Um, and the other is also as we have a project um, funded by the Arcadia Fund called Advancing Haiku, which is adding a lot of uh, features to, to the platform as well. So we're, we're involved both in providing and developing the platform. Thank you, Brian. Amanda, Amanda Herford, do you wanna say hello? Sure. Hi, I'm Amanda Herford. I'm Scholarly Communications Director for Palney, and Palney is short for Private Academic Library Network of Indiana. Palney is a library consortium in Indiana, and we serve 24 small private institutions across our state, and we're working with PALC on the Haiku for Consortia project. Thank you. And I'm Kevin Kochansky. I'm a white 40-something um, male, uh, with uh, closely cropped bald hair and glasses. Um, and I am client liaison with Notch 8. We are a Ruby on Rails development consultancy based in San Diego, but with a presence all over the country at the moment. Uh, and um, we have been involved in the San Barra community for the last four years. And Haiku is definitely one of the um, uh, technologies that we are an active part of that community. Um, and I also chair the Haiku Interest Group the last Thursday of every month, except this month because we're dealing with Connect, but I think we're gonna meet next week. Um, so we're gonna move ahead and we've got some prompt questions that um, this is gonna be a very casual format. Um, anybody on the panel, um, feel free to offer some response to these questions. And hopefully once we get through, uh, we'll have some time for questions from the audience as well. So feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom for that. Um, so let's start with the most basic um, the concept of this talk being um, why Haiku has responded to different use cases, um, that it's more versatile than 
folks may realize. And so I'd like to hear from, from whoever wants to start about why you chose Haiku for your uh, repository solution. You're going to have to direct us, Kevin. <laughs> You're right. I will call on names. <laughs> Shall I start? Thank you, Sarah. Um, so we are using Haiku, Tambira Haiku, for our institutional research repository for the British Library. And as I mentioned, for a small number of um, beta service uh, like-minded organisations. The British Library, obviously, we're the National Library of the UK. We have two physical sites, one in London and one in the north of England in, um, in Yorkshire, just off the A1, for those of you who know Yorkshire well, between Leeds and York. Um, and although research potentially is not a, not a large amount of what we do, a large proportion of what we do, we do do significant amounts of research, quite often in, in partnership with the university. But increasingly, as the lead um, funding holder for the research, our research inevitably is often around our own collection items, our manuscripts, our digital collections increasingly. We're very interested in new forms of research, data analysis, um, taking advantage of dig digitized collections. And also we do a fair amount of um, research around library infrastructure projects. So national and international library um, activities. Our repository holds not that many print-based outputs, but we're also very interested in non-print-based outputs such as exhibitions, how we would present an exhibition and the research that goes into an exhibition um, in the repository in terms of research outputs. So our repository, as I've mentioned, is our own, but also because we work closely with museums and libraries and galleries across the UK, we were all in a similar position of needing a repository, not necessarily having enormous amounts of research, but all needing somewhere like a repository to put our research outputs and to promote and make accessible our research increase in a greater way than it already was. So our pilot has, pilot service or beta service now, has six separate haiku based repositories um, sitting on a single haiku instance. Um, so they're not really a, multi -ten, um, a multiple organisational repository. We've got separate repositories all brought together under a single shared search and shared landing page. That's probably enough. I'm really aware of the time whizzing by. Thanks, Sarah. Would somebody from the uh, PALS team like to discuss from your perspective? Why don't you go, Amanda, because I wasn't there when the decision was made to go with Haiku. Okay, thanks. So Palni, I'm going to speak from the Palni's perspective first. Um, Palni chooses to use Haiku because it really does best satisfy our vision for our needs and our values for a repository that's open source and that's consortially scalable and shareable within our institutions. Before this project, many of our schools, because they're small, they did not have IRs because they were either way too expensive to purchase individually or way too technically demanding to host locally. And by providing a repository service that comes included in the Palni fees, we're able to, and that we're able to centrally administer for everyone, we're able to solve those problems, um, allowing what was previously not possible to happen for our schools. So it's really a win-win. Um, our institutions get what they need in a repository. And by meeting this need, we're able to contribute to the overall value that Palni can provide as a consortium. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Gretchen. Um, from Palsy's perspective, uh, we have uh, currently don't offer a service like an institutional repository or a repository service. We mostly work together on consortial purchasing and resource sharing. Um, but our, um, our current um, 
leadership, uh, I guess, is very interested in expanding um, that role and taking more advantage of the consortial relationship within our area. Um, so uh, we got some some requests from people about could we look into offering some kind of repository service. So for us, it's a much more exploratory um, project to see how it could fit into Palsy's model. I think what we really like about Haiku or what we think is is the potential um, that Haiku could offer is that our use cases are much more diverse. We have um, the gamut of people who just want to do an IR, um, people who want to do everything in the kitchen sink that their library has because they don't have any other service. We have very large institutions that already run their own services and very small institutions that have never done anything like that. Um, so I would really like to see um, us get Haiku to fulfill its potential, to be a flexible kind of service that could um, meet a bunch of needs um, using modern technologies. Um, that's what I think back in the original conception of what Hydra in a Box um, was going to be, you know, that was that was one of the things that was in there, um, that it could be a answer to and an update of the kind of repository services that were, were currently available to use fairly easily. Um, so uh, that's just a little bit of a different perspective. Thanks, and Brian. Sorry, just unmuting. Um, yeah, so Ubiquity, um, I think um, very much like Amanda said, um, got involved with Haiku specifically, um, partly because our core values mandate that we, we always work with open source products. Um, so when we got involved and decided to get involved with repositories, we looked around for the, the right platform and we, we chose first Samvera um, as a good technology stack and then Haiku as the most suitable part of that stack. Um, and partly that's because it was it was a blank slate. It was a, a, a nearly finished project, which meant we we were able to be very formative in building it out. And we thought we could then um, address a lot of the problems we see with repositories today, like a lot of the issues like making them more flexible, um, reducing the costs of, of, of them by having a, a, a cloud hosted solution rather than a self hosted one, um, addressing the issues of you know the reluctance of researchers to engage in a repository by being able to design it better. Um, and also, being able to really take on the, the potential for green open access that repositories haven't been meeting. So we felt that, you know, with a more blank slate, this was easier. Um, and we also felt that um, we could build, build something which was really a more next generation type of repository. Um, it's very much in line with the core um, aims, such as, you know, the repository should be available for all types of resources like data and preprints and so forth. Um, whereas a lot of the legacy platforms out there are built really for publications only. So we, we felt with Haiku, we had a good chance to to go in that direction. Um, another core goal is that uh, the repository should be networked with many cross repository connections and with um, Haiku's multi tenant structure. Uh, we thought that was a good, good start. Uh, and they should also be very machine friendly. And once again, with, with things like Fedora underlying um, Haiku and, and the ability to start from scratch, um, we really felt we could make a, a good move in that direction too. So overall, Haiku for us is, was a, you know, a really good sort of blank slate of an open source project built on good technology that we felt was, you know, the, the best starting point for all of us. Thank you. And just to keep it brief from Nachet's perspective, a lot of what you have said is also what's drawn us to use Haiku for um, different project implementations. We've been in the position of recommending Hyrax versus Haiku to a few projects and uh, Palony and Palsy is something that Haiku, it was uh, Notchate's, one of Notchate's first Haiku projects and certainly one that we've been um, deep into working with them for uh, going on two years now, I think. Uh, but we're also using Haiku for the National Transportation Library with the U.S. Department of Transportation. And that was in response to the request for scalable, sustainable technologies that was built on open source. Um, and the Newman Numismatic Portal with Washington University in St. Louis. Um, Haiku seemed like a good starting place um, because they had a lot of customized data types that they needed um, that we could leverage for uh, their very different work types and relationships that they wanted to set up, which has been a big part of that project. Um, and Notate also has a Haiku repository service, Haiku Up. Um, and of course, the multi-tenancy there is a great feature because we run one instance of the software. And right now, I think we have over 50 repositories on it. Of course, a lot of those were set up for a workshop last week, but it just shows how easy it was to create um, multiple repositories that all have content being used um, that were 
being wound up being 20 people in that workshop and everybody's uploading and downloading images and creating collections at the same time. And uh, it just worked really well. And that was all running on one instance of, uh, of Haiku. Um, so our next question here is um, why, why, to, why did you choose to pilot? Because Haiku, you know, even now four years in since Hydra in a Box or five, since that was, I think that was 2015, since Hydra in a Box kind of started, um, Haiku is still kind of finding its feet and is not um, not a go-to solution for everybody, but it, it's only because they don't realize it. So I'd love to hear from some of you about why you chose to pilot with Haiku going back a couple years now for some of you um, when it wasn't necessarily a proven solution. And maybe we could start with Pals on that one. I can just uh, say briefly. Oh, sorry. No, please go. <laughs> okay. um, so we took a while to figure out what direction that we wanted to go in for our collaborative IR. And we spent a lot of time on the Palni side um, looking at different examples of collaborative IRs um, and all the different options, including Digital Commons, DSpace, Island Door, even Content DM. And really, none of them were viable for our project for one reason or another. Uh, mostly in terms of multi-tenancy, lack thereof, um, cost and ease of use. So rather than be sort of paralyzed by this lack of choice, we decided to um, partner with Palsy to kind of move boldly ahead. Um, and I'll let Gretchen follow up if she has anything else to say. Um, I think Palsy is um, <clears throat> trying to um, build up a, a kind of a service or a, a core component of what we do that is around research and development um, for to represent the libraries in our consortium. Um, you know, these are the kinds of things that um, maybe don't uh, get into the budget of a smaller library. Um, they don't have the ability to um, take advantage of new technologies. Um, and there are also things that maybe work better if we all kind of chip in. So I think Palsy is very interested in not just the actual service, but the ability to, um, to create new efficiencies and examine and, and uh, try out, and I'm, there's a word I'm trying to come up with, but I can't think of, but to to kind of spur innovation and to be able to do that for our libraries and bring it back to our libraries and to kind of create a new model of sharing amongst the libraries um, in our in our consortium in that respect. Uh, Brian, do you have anything to offer on this question? Sure. And, and um, so Haiku was very much new and unproven when we got involved. I mean, it had been, the development wasn't yet complete um, from the early grant funded work. Um, so it needed further work. And we, we, we spent two years working with the BL to get it to what we felt was a, a, a feature complete state. Um, so, but we, we got involved largely because we, we really believed in the community. We thought um, um, Haiku had a very strong open source community behind it, and we were, we felt had a lot of confidence that um, the other institutions involved would, you know, be a great aid. Um, we looked at the technology stack and architecture and felt that it was very good to build on for the future. Um, a lot of the old legacy platforms like ePrints and BPress are written outdated technologies like Perl, um, but um, you know, Sunfair has a very good future um, oriented um, stack. Um, it was also the only multi tenant. You know, good multi-tenant solution out there, which was a big driver for, for working with the British Library, of course. Um, so, I mean, it really meant we felt that we could we could build something new without a lot of the legacy um, issues and outdated concepts um, that a lot of the the other platforms had, um, and that was really one of the main reasons to get involved with it. Thanks, Sarah. Do you have anything to add from the British Library perspective? Yeah, I mean, Brian has mentioned the word multi-tenancy. We knew right from the beginning that we wanted to. Um, try and develop something that suited our group of cultural heritage organizations rather than just do it for ourselves so lots and lots of people told us that multi-tenancy repositories are very hard <laughs> were very hard before we before we um, jumped into into the deep end we ran a classic procurement exercise we had a lot of um, options out there um, in the UK most universities either have an ePrints or a DSpace repository, but there are a number of other solutions which um, are used in the UK and, and obviously elsewhere as well. We went for Haiku because of the multi-tenancy aspect, 
although as it happens right now we have as i said we have six separate repositories that sit on the same instance so it's not really necessarily a multi share multi-tenant or multi-organization or shared repository i think it's true to say right at the beginning of our project we didn't really know or each of us had a slightly different idea about what we had in mind for a multi-tenancy repository a multi-organization shared repository um, our arch technical architect really liked the architecture of um, Sambira Haiku um, and it was his chosen um, solution uh, quite early on in our, our selection process. I think we were also slightly attracted by the fact that it was a new product that had exciting potential. Um, as I've mentioned, lots of our research outputs are what you might call more informal. They don't necessarily get published in um, the traditional uh, journals and, and book publications. Um, we organisations like our, some of our partners of the British Museum, Kew Gardens, very, very, very public, very heavily um, visited websites, very attractive organisations in their own right. Um, so the look and feel and the modern um, interface was also something that we wanted. Now, as it happens at the moment, our user interface is not built in Haiku. It's built as a proprietary um, solution by Ubiquiti, who are our current um, technical supplier. Um, and there were a number of things in the Haiku product when we started our project that surprised us that they were less well developed than we had expected. So a lot of our project uh, was about quickly developing all of the uh, features and functionality that we wanted and we were hoping to get. And um, it was an enormous, we, we set ourselves a really hard task. I mean, the library had never had a repository before. Ubiquity were very new to the scene. We were using Haiku that was very new and we wanted to do it as a multiple um, cluster of organisations. And um, we're really happy with where we are now with it. We really love the product and, um, and we like the fact that you can throw any types of file in there and um, it, it uses the universal viewer which the British Library is also a partner in. So we are able to, any image file, so exhibition images, for example, we're able to present those using the viewer in Haiku. So that's why we chose it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I will take this moment just to remind folks that they can ask questions in the Q&A. Um, I'm mindful of time. We started a little late, but I, I assume we should be wrapping at half past. Um, but just to jump in on Notchate's side of this, um, I think I wasn't here um, when we started with our first haiku project and made this decision, but I know that um, it's part of Notchate's culture to kind of want to be a part of this community and be a part of shaping this new technology. So it, that echoes a lot of what I've just heard. But, um, uh, and those of you who know Rob Kaufman, Notchate's founding partner, and I know everybody on this panel does, uh, I would just venture to say that he likes a challenge. So <laughs> being part of Haiku definitely uh, speaks to that, but it, it's been exciting. It's, it's, fulfilled, it's fulfilled why I know we got involved. The fact that it could speak to the use case of the clients that we were working with at the time, but also give us an opportunity to help lead this technology and help have it respond to its kind of first users. Your requirements are really what's shaping um, what the software has become and, and what its future looks like. Um, so looking to the future, I'll ask um, what features uh, from your project or projects do you think um, are going to benefit other Haiku adopters? And that could be things that have been contributed back or that are on your roadmaps to contribute back. And uh, maybe just back in reverse order, Sarah, if you want to start. Yeah, um, I think it makes sense for us to start. Um, as I say, Ubiquiti have developed a lot of features for our repository, which currently are not fed back into the core code. Um, there is a commitment from Ubiquiti right now, Brian might want to say a bit more about getting all of those features fed in as soon as possible. Certainly the ones obviously that were, were developed in Haiku as opposed to um, a non-Haiku uh, technology. There's a session right after this one that is um, presented by the Advancing Haiku Project, which is doing just as the label on the tin says, it's a, a large project involving Ubiquity, the British Library and the University of Virginia. I know there's been presentations already um, about it. And that next session is about prioritizing 
the features that need to be developed and fed back into the core Haiku um, uh, code base, if I'm not wrong. So I'd encourage anyone who's interested in new features and things to join the next session if you can. Um, we've got a lot of different features. <clears throat> um, we've developed a lot of new work types. So we've got 11 different work types um, in our repository um, that we're using at the moment. We've got uh, DOI minting, we've got an integration with data site. We've got a DOI lookup feature, which is really great. P paste in a, a, um, an existing publisher DOI and it will auto populate a lot of the, of the fields and feed all of that metadata back to data site. Um, other things <laughs> they're, all, they're all on the list we can share the list with you we are about to run out of time so i'd <laughs> love to bounce to brian i just just really quickly on it, everything we've developed for for um the british library and other, other partners like pacific university has always been open source it's always been available open source in github um we're in the process right now of, of feeding everything back. Um, so the DOI minting, uh, for example, is being contributed back as a Hyrax plugin. And Chris Colbert will be speaking about that this afternoon if you're interested. Um, I think if I was going to pick the, the, the very big things that I think are going to benefit the community the most, um, I would say we've contributed back. Or we're we're in, the, in the process right now of committing back, and it should be finished this month, the uh, REST API which means that the, the system becomes fully interoperable with other systems. Uh, can, you can plug in any front end you want, that type of thing. It really adds a lot of uh, flexibility to the system. Um, and then we, yes, the Advancing Haiku project is going to be adding a lot of exciting stuff like uh, auto-population from services like Unpaywall, uh, full publisher level metrics uh, from an open source project we worked on in Europe, uh, profiles with ORCID synchronization, um, and we're working to build out the in-browser display of objects and add hypothesis annotation, things like that. And just, just really make repositories somewhere where researchers want to put research. Thanks, Brian. Um, I know um, Abigail's probably stressing because it's half past, but we did start about five minutes late. So hopefully that gives us one minute to let uh, Gretchen or Amanda say a few words before we wrap. Um, we'll be talking at 12 about uh, some work that we've done on related to um, groups and roles and permissions and um, some new functionality that could benefit the community there. Um, as part of our current phase, we're also hopefully going to be creating a couple of um, layout templates so that you can kind of um, back uh, away from or, or make a, a different um, uh, different than the black light out of the box, which in Haiku actually has some really IR specific features. Um, and I think those two parts of our current project are probably the biggest benefits. Thank you. Um, as we wrap, I just want to thank the panelists for joining and sharing your thoughts on this, um, you know, what continues to be an exciting technology with a great future. And uh, want to call out just a few places where you can find Haiku um, online. Um, once again, I'll mention the interest group meets most months the last Thursday of the month. Um, and I uh, want to thank everybody for joining. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful panel about Haiku. I really appreciate it. Um, and for folks who might have questions that they didn't get a chance to ask, please hop over to Slack and feel free to continue the conversation there.